Today's guest is a self-development coach, but with a little bit of a twist. Charles Missy is a friend of mine from Sydney, Australia, and he has taken on the spiritual community in his content. As we know in that space, there is a lot of people who have never really addressed their own insecurities and instead choose to tell you, your friends, your family, how you can improve and what you should do when we all know that they've never really addressed their own personal insecurities. The thing that drew me to Charles is his authenticity and honesty in how he approaches helping people get to that next step or cover that barrier they may have in their life. And just quickly, I want to apologize because the first two or three minutes, the microphones failed on us, so the audio is coming from the cameras instead of the actual microphones. It was fixed two or three minutes in and the audio does get back on track, so if you do wanna to skip to it, you can, but if you also are just happy to grit your teeth, it's not that bad, but it's not as pleasant, but if you wanna just listen through and then I promise it gets to nice audio to listen to at that two or three minute mark. Let's get into the show. Dude, thanks for coming to catch up. It's like, I've been watching you sit, like, ever since I went. It's funny, like, I went to America, and I think it's like, that's when you started pumping content. And it was, mm. you touched on something that is, so background, my wife, was very spiritual when we first met. Okay. But I, all her friends and uh, I guess in a circle, I would say to her, I'm like, dude, that chick is so close to just spinning off this earth. Yeah, like okay. the whole spiritual, like the point where I, would, I was just like, that person is completely detached under the guise and I guess facade of being spiritualistic. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because when I first met you, God, 10 years ago? Maybe, yeah, I'd say about 10 years, ago. yeah. You were, just, you were this heavy deadlifting <laughs> dude, like, what, it was like 250 kilos yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, that's like, right. And so it was funny because like we, we passed, like we, we, we didn't part or anything like that, it was just we didn't run into each other for ages. Yeah, and then all exactly. of a sudden you're on my feet, literally talking about spirituality and everything. I'm like, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, how the fuck did that guy get into that? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah. And... But it was funny because it was like, you're saying everything that I was saying, because I didn't realize I was a spiritual person until mm. my wife pointed out, but I was also like aware of like the detachment, like I said, with, with how you're pointing out a lot mm. of it. Where Certain says, aspects of it. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like ayahuasca right now, uh, there was someone we knew who was doing ayahuasca weekly. And I'm like, you're not yeah, finding yeah. yourself, you're escaping from yourself. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, like just seeing your stuff, I was just like, dude, I just want to pick your brain more. Yeah, I mean, yeah cool. I, 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 I love to... talking about that stuff. Yeah, 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 it's very fascinating for me. It's it's uh it's quite popular in America. Yeah, like uh, there's a lot, half of my followers are actually from the states. And I believe it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know there's quite a, I think even around Bring Florida. Closer, actually, yeah. Yeah. Bring yeah. Closer. I want to hear your voice. Like, yeah, okay. I always like a fit. Like, it look like you're about to do something inappropriate. Yeah, is that okay? Like That's that? So good. Okay, cool. Every time I look in the mirror and the camera, though, I see your tan and I see Casper looking back at me. And it, um, <laughs> That's the beauty of the universe, bro. There's, uh, you know, contrast. <laughs> There's a lot of contrast. I wouldn't right have now. a nice tan unless there was someone else to compare it to, you know. And, <laughs> but, you know, it, my tan's nice now in this time and place. But if you fast, if you go back in time, maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago in Australia, here, white Australia policy or whatever the fuck was going on. Yeah, it'd probably be better that you had that, that sort was, of thing. Yeah. I forgot about the white policy. Theory. So it depends what universe you're in, time and place. Yeah. Yeah. Australia's changed. It has changed a lot. It has changed. Yeah, yeah. I now find, I've got a good skin color. Yeah. I can't find a white person in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you go out west. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I'd love to pick your brain as well. Like, mm. First of all, how the heck did you make this transition? Mm. Because from absolute beast deadlifting oh, one second all right guys we're back i don't know what happened there sorry about that um, a little glitch in the matrix very normal. It, was, it was a little git a little mm -hmm. glitch mm -hmm. i don't know what maybe someone heard us someone was listening to us yeah yeah they're like they're about to talk about deep shit <laughs> <laughs> interfere and interrupt <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go shallow sometimes to go deep <laughs> yeah. uh but no so yeah so what were we talking about the transition from, yeah yeah when did you transition 
<laughs> so my former human identity, I don't identify as a human anymore. <laughs> I am a now intergalactic being in this universe floating around. You have gotten very deep, which I love. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you talk about stuff that I talk about my, I'll talk with my wife about mm. often. And it's funny because I'll share stuff with her. And I'm just like, hey, here's another pointer. Here's another, mm -hmm. or this is so insert old friend of hers and she's like fuck you're right <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I, look i think i've um i've always been like very deep uh like in my essence mm. i think when you saw me that was more of a uh a state i was in at that time that was a way to feel more protected safe worthy accepted by others and it was in the form of trying to be as big and strong and, and, and as hard as possible and lift as heavy as possible and as strong and as beasty as possible at that time you know obviously i wasn't you know i still had an essence of being a you know nice guy and funny and you know mm -hmm. had, had that sense of humor back then as well but i think that the depth and my depth and creativity wasn't something that i was really tuned into much at that time or integrating just because it wasn't that important for me back then it was more important for me to be bigger stronger and um yeah shit, shit like that so i think uh the transition sort of happened when i uh like i, I was into training because i just liked bettering myself yeah for myself but i was personal training because i liked bettering others and helping other people i just love that like exchange of connecting with the client you know uh, there's a level of depth to it as well you yeah. gotta be interested in you know humans and you know you're, you're into like human behavior because you're all about helping people organize their life and their routine and their habits and training routines and their mindset so you naturally you just kind of get drawn deeper and deeper into then eventually learning about like human behavioral psychology mm -hmm. you know habits and you know our instinctual responses our primal urges the environment how that dictates like what we're motivated to do and or the sort of um state of our health that we can be in depending on you know what our social economic status is and if there's a maccas across the road you're going to be more likely to eat maccas like just things yeah. like that you know so you're just naturally sort of expanding your perspective and um as i was pt and i was doing a lot of traveling so that's a big thing that really opened me up a lot more to where i was traveling like all around africa mm. uh, asia middle east south america and you know just subjecting yourself to different environments you know i'm going to see different historical monuments, nature, like tribes, villages, dangerous areas as well, favelas in Brazil, border of Afghanistan. What were the favelas like? Yeah, really I cool. I hear wild yeah. shit there. What's that? I hear wild stuff about the favelas. Yeah. Look, did you go through them? Or? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So oh, there was, was a favela. Like? It was, I think it's one of the biggest favelas in South America. Mm -hmm. um, we went there with a guide, like a local guide. So he kind of walked us around and... It's just like a really cool kind of slum is the best way that I can describe it. Like yep. the buildings are all painted different colors. There's something like artistic about it as well. You know, obviously there's hardship and distress. And, yeah, crazy and, and gun poverty, violence. You know what I mean? Uh, and violence, yeah, for sure. Uh, but there was there, there's a level of like curiosity that I had at that time to just be like, wow, like, this is so cool. I'm at a favela, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're walking past guys with guns and machetes that are like a local kind of um basically they don't have police that yeah. that that manage um order in the favela because the local gangsters and mafia you know they don't trust the police so they have their own policing system which is just a bunch Such of teenagers wild west, yeah, yeah. Just, just a bunch of teenagers with like m16s and machetes and shit <laughs> and if you don't give them problems you know they'll they'll kind of leave you alone especially if you're with a guide yeah, gotcha. Because you, know, you got to pay the guide, so it's a part of their little economy in the favela. It's mm -hmm. like tourism. They kind of give you a tour in the favela. Yeah. So, you know, I was like 22 when I went there. So you can imagine mm -hmm. like a 22-year-old from like inner west Sydney, you know, just going to a favela. It's just like it's naturally going to blow your mind a little bit, you know. Yeah. It's not that common that, you know, people I knew at that age in that area that I grew up in were doing things like that. So I felt yeah. like I was just… Because Sydney is so safe. Oh, yeah, big like, time. When you, let's quickly tell a story about how Susan reversed her type 2 diabetes in 12 to 16 weeks. Now, we all know that traditional medicine 
they're not in it to make you healthy because if they can keep you in poor health, they can keep themselves rich. Now, this has become extremely frustrating with all of us now that the veil has been lifted from our eyes and a lot of us are turning to holistic medicine because its goal is to get to the root cause undo the problem and help us live a better life, which is what we want. We don't want to be addicted or subscribed to these pills or medications for the rest of our life. Also because it's just freaking expensive. What Susan ended up doing, she got tired of hearing all these things, these excuses from doctors that, hey, don't worry, insulin's your thing, insulin's your friend, you're gonna be on it for life and that'll keep you steady. Instead, she reached out to the team at Revital. They had a look at her blood work And through holistic interpretation, they gave her a pathway of nutrition, other support, so that she can take actionable steps. And what happened is in her individual case, now we can't claim and we're not saying that this will happen to everyone, but in Susan's individual case, Susan reversed her type 2 diabetes in 12 to 16 weeks. It is a game changer for someone's quality of life. Now, if you have a chronic issue that every time you go to a doctor, they say, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Give Revital a try. What you can do is just head to bit.ly forward slash Revital Health. That link is in the description of wherever you're watching or hearing this. Have a consultation call with my friend, Dr. Jared. Dr. Jared's been on our podcast. You may have seen the face a couple of times. He will see first before he even commits anything, whether or not he can help. Because this is, again, health is an ever- evolving thing it's nuanced but he wants to make sure that you are the right fit for revital and make sure that he can serve you the right way so if you want to find out just book a call have a conversation see if it's right for you by just going to bit.ly forward slash revital health that link is in the description make use of it and let's make your life feel better i don't want to feel crap i want to feel good and so do you Let's get back to the show. You travel yeah. anywhere, like even you go to America, mm. you just like, I, I call it like Sydney syndrome, where we're kind of delusional about how safe stuff really mm. is. And people can get into trouble going even just like uh, San Francisco 15 years ago. Now you wouldn't even go there, but yeah, right. it is it is funny how safe it is here. Yeah, it's, it's actually, uh, well, see, this is something that I gained a lot of perspective from from my travels like mm-hmm. i was consciously choosing to go to places that the government was telling me not to go to yep like pakistan or hezbollah areas in lebanon or you know these favelas in brazil or, you know random places where the government is like on on the it has like an area like a red uh color on the map saying yep. do not travel here you know but i was going there so but i found that i actually was very safe in these areas like nothing happened to me and the people really? were, people were really friendly and huh. everyone was very positive and helpful and uh, that kind of blew my mind but in fact 30 minutes from where i lived in sydney and i'd agree with you statistically uh sydney is way more safe <laughs> yeah. in comparison we think red ferns are ghetto <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like statistically of course the number of like whatever homicides and crime rates of course but for me, like just subjectively, so it was yeah. like the deep effect it had on me. Thirty minutes from where I grew up in Sydney, uh, I'd been bottled in the face. I'd been robbed with a machete. I've seen people getting stabbed. I've been knocked mm. out cold on the street. Like, so I, I'd experienced like violence. Yeah. Like, thirty minutes from where I grew up, but then I'm going and fucking, you know, hanging out with like, uh, going to a place where Taliban like members are heavily involved in the local kind of political system like these these villages and towns on the border of afghanistan and like you know and i'm there going fuck like but i'm actually pretty good you know so yeah it's not taking away that it's completely safe over there and he's unsafe but it's just from my own universe it was like mm-hmm. like oh my god man like it's like who knows what is and you know it's actually quite it, it just kind of gave me a level of uh, openness yeah. and curiosity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes total sense because I remember the first time I traveled to your point, it wasn't, it was probably like I was 26. Mm. And no, sorry, 21. I won a trip to Vegas. But even Vegas isn't real. But it gave yeah. me enough to be just like, ah, oh, you, you know, you grow up with TV shows and, and you see America in like a, a cinema situation. Like you can see a ghetto in a movie and it still looks cool. Mm. But then you go to like Hollywood Boulevard and it 
smells like piss. Yeah. And you're like, man, this kind of sucks. You know, it's actually, uh, out of all these places I've been to, LA was one of the places where I genuinely felt unsafe at one point. Mm-hmm. Well, you will now. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> and that was like, that was the same time I went to South America. So like 10, 10, 9, 10 years ago. Yeah. Me and my mate were like, oh, let's go to Venice Beach, man. Oh, Venice Beach is wild. Yeah. Venice Beach is a dangerous place. Well, we were in like Hollywood or some shit. And we're like, yeah, let's go to Venice Beach just down the road. But apparently it's yeah. like decent, you know, distance away. And you've got to catch this bus and that fucking bus. And mm. before we know it, we caught the wrong bus. And we're in some neighborhood in the middle of fucking nowhere going, where the fuck are we? Yeah. And then all these like Mexican cholos are coming up to us going, hey, is there, you sure you're not last homes? <laughs> like, like, because, you know. You know, th- they knew we weren't from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can try and, like, I'm brown, man. I can fucking fit in with the Mexicanos, but no chance. <laughs> no like, chance. We're wearing, like, sp- I was wearing, like, you know, uh, swim shorts that are like <laughs> halfway down my leg and over there they're all wearing yeah, long you, if you show your knees you're probably gay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> my mate's wearing like thongs like a bum bag it's like yeah. a, no no chance they knew we weren't from there yeah that's the, that is the thing cause I, that was the first piece of advice I got given for my friend when I visited in 2012 yeah. he's like I don't care if if you need to piss and the, like there's an exit on the highway do not get off mm. he goes unless the the um at that time it was Garmin or Tom Tom we didn't it was before uh, we had an actual iPhone oh, okay, he goes right, unless right. the Tom Tom says get off that exit do not get off that exit and I was like really and then yeah like you experiencing like oh fuck like, this mm. is crazy yeah I've heard I've heard that like especially during and after COVID now that there's a lot of homelessness and drugs well it's and also the, like it's the legislation the wokeness like okay. in um where it, it, LA and San Francisco. Now you can steal up to nine hundred and fifty dollars worth of goods per sitting, and not even get a misdemeanor slap on the wrist. So I don't get that. What's the logic behind that? I don't know. They're like, they're, there's obviously conspiracy theories of like you know the George Soros stuff and people wanting to it, society to collapse and blah blah blah. Mm, okay, but it's. I don't know what's going on, but it's insane because people are just stealing and just just shit. bags. Like they'll go in with bags, and you watch. There's a security guard right there, can't do shit because if he touches touches them, them that's assault. So if you defend your property, hmm. f- you're the one that goes to prison, not the person stealing your shit. How do these shops make profit? Like, they don't. Man. There's a lot of them starting. So a lot of franchises now are starting to actually pull out okay. of the area and. It's hilarious because rather than the government, rather than the the councils or, or mayors going, all right, maybe it's because of this reason. They mm. go, well, no, this is proof that big corporations are going to further ruin these areas mm. because now these areas don't have places to eat. And you're like, where is this cognitive dissonance coming mm. from? Like mm. insane. Like you're never the reason mm. that people are like, hey, dude, we can't afford people stealing shit mm. day in, mm. day out. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I saw a few videos of that, and I was like, oh, I'm not too sure what that's about, but it looked a bit weird. It's a very bizarre thing, and like when you're, and especially when you're over there, like you realize the rhetoric of more guns in the in good people's hands makes it safer. Mm. It's true. It's so. It, it's so. As an Aussie, it's so dumb to hear that. Mm. But there's like obviously no guns is safer. Right. But once you're over there. You realize that, look, the gun situation is so far gone, you're never going to reverse it. Mm. However, if you look at gun violence, like Texas, Florida, outside of Miami, um, where gun ownership is like willy-nilly, there's a huge gun culture, and every, like probably every third person is going to have a gun in their shirt. Gun violence is... Pfft, because people are like, well, fuck, I'm not going to screw around here. Yeah, right. I don't know if you have a gun. He yeah, has a gun. She right. has a yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can understand that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so all this it's stuff like we used to hear. Hundred percent. Yeah. And the most polite. It's like if you walk around and everyone knows how to, you know, do MMA. People are going to be less likely to start yes. fights on the street. You know. Yeah, it, like the threat of violence is what creates 
border, mm. ironically enough. Yeah, well, that's why we have, like, borders with, like, military presence and border patrols and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like a way... It's like aggression, a controlled aggression is there as a way to maintain and secure boundaries. And, you know, we have that system within us as well. We have our own uh, fight system that activates whenever, you know, someone's crossing over a boundary. We access, like, a high degree of uh, anger. Our physiology changes as a way to defend us. So, like, a, mm-hmm. a gun would be, like, a a more extreme version of yeah. how to channel that fight response. Yeah. yeah. And there's still like, I mean, there's laws like in Florida, you can conceal carry without a permit, but if someone says something to you and you flash the gun at them, that's still, um, what is aggravated assault. Okay. Like you can't use your gun as a threat. Mm. It's still like there's as much common sense as there is possible. Like, People think that all of a sudden someone's just going to start waving guns around and like, but that's that's it, like that. Literally, you you will go to prison if you like. Hey, right, okay. Um, but it is it is quite a, a funny thing now because I've become so pro gun in America. Mm-hmm. Come back mm-hmm. here, I'm like, this is safer. Yeah, this is right. a better situation. Mm-hmm. But in America, like you go to Texas, that is the most polite state in the whole of America. Road rage is like next to zero. Mm. Uh, if you're driving down, people are like, please come in, sir. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, don't, I don't want to cut you off because mm-hmm. they're like the most gun loving state. Mm-hmm. And you don't know, like, you, people would say to me, like, well, you know, what happens if there's a road rage situation? You don't know if there's a crazy guy. I'm like, here's the thing you're not going to be road raging, are you? Mm-hmm. Okay. You just literally pointed out the thing that everyone's thinking is, I'm not going to start honking my horn and going off at someone in the other car across from me. Because I don't know if he's a nut job. Right. So it's it, it's so bizarre mm, to yeah, say can, that out out, yeah, out loud. I can imagine, yeah. But once you live there, you're like, I get the broken mm. thought process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I can I'm, I can imagine that you gonna go going to live there would you know come to these sort of you know realizations and comparing the two different places. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's kind of weird. This is the first trip back to Australia that Australia's kind of broken my heart a little bit because the insane wokeness that's happening here. Like, I've heard stories about even schools now where I'm just like, I thought that was just crazy California. Mm. Like, I heard a story literally yesterday about a, a lady who pulled a daughter out of a affluent school that was a sister school to the, the, um, the school I went to. And it, these girls, so it was two eight-year-olds that were soliciting her eight-year-old daughter. And they were identified as lesbian, eight-year-olds, and were saying, it's cool to be attracted to a female, blah, 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 like sort of, sort of making advances towards her daughter. Mm. So she calls the principal, organizes a meeting. And in the meeting, she says, look, this is, just, this is not cool. So can we either separate those two girls, separate my daughter, or just tell them to not, to, to just stop what they're doing? Any rational person's gonna say like, yeah, absolutely, that, you know, sexual advances on an eight-year-old, even by an eight-year-old, is ridiculous. Mm. No, it was, your daughter, your daughter needs to learn to accept people for who they are, whether they're gay, trans, or furries. Okay. Literally. Yeah. So then she responds, what the fuck's a furry? Mm. You know what a furry is, right? No, I don't. A furry is someone who identifies as an animal. Okay, right. So they shit right. in litter boxes, they eat out of bowls, like whole other yeah, okay, kettle of interesting. interesting personalities. Yeah, right. So she said that to her, the principal. Mm. So there's, obviously this mom just lost her shit, starts yelling at the, at the principal, like, you're fucked. And then goes, gets her, her daughter out of the class, yells at all the kids going, go home and fucking tell your parents to pull you out of this fucking joke of a school. Mm. And when I heard, when I'm hearing stuff like that, like it's such an insane thing that we hear from like California doing that. Like California is like the mecca of insanity. Right, okay. That when like I- Like that stuff happens more often there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That when I came here and I'm here, like that was one of a couple of stories I heard. And I was just like, I used to think Australia was the sensible place. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, the saying, oh, that of course that's in America. I'm like, holy fuck, what happened in the last three, four years here? Yeah, right. It, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I haven't been following that stuff too much. I know that there yeah. are some, definitely some 
kind of concepts going out there with um, like people's identity and you know sexual orientation and all that sort of stuff, um, and how you know children are being heavily exposed to it. Yeah. Um, drag and, drag queen story time. Yeah, like I know that there's a lot more of that stuff happening now, um, and yeah, like it's it's weird. It's like you don't care about it until you have your own kid mm. and then all well, of a sudden imagine, yeah. it's like your magnifying glass just gets turned on and it's mm. like fuck like I know if I didn't have my daughter and my other other daughter on the way I wouldn't be looking into it either mm. and right, I think yeah well I can imagine once I'm having kids I'm going to be more mm. uh, conscious of what's going on in the the children world um, a thing just like it a, a trigger just like a switch clicks over mm. and all of a sudden like you're a little anti-vax you're yeah, a little like right. anti-medicine and all of a, like you're like hold on let me just let me look further into all these things and you're like oh crap am i a conspiracy theorist now <laughs> yeah right well you know it, it helps to have a you know healthy level of skepticism and distrust you know i for one have that part of me and you know i like that part of me it's it just dictates what sort of decisions i'm going to make in my own life that feels right for me and you know, can't just take everything on face value and just trust everything. Um, mm. Have to have that that part of us that's willing to question things, and you know, at the same time also questioning that part of you to ensure that it's not getting completely enmeshed in your identity. And yep. after then, all of a sudden, you're questioning everything, and then you know, what is reality? Everything's a lie, and then <laughs> life can be pretty distressing like that. And it can if yeah. you're accessing the truth you know then it is going to be a bit distressing because you're going to be disillusioned to things that you thought were true and you know, Santa Claus isn't real and what mm -hmm. do you mean it wasn't the tooth fairy you know so those moments of disillusionment can definitely be uh, be challenging for us but um, yeah I, I started you know having these sort of thoughts when I was like I think you know around during the, the war in the Middle East I always just felt mm. like there was something a bit off with it uh, it didn't feel right it just felt yeah. like the, the, the media was kind of propping it up a lot uh, in the like you know early 2000s and all that it just anytime I watched people talking about it, I'm like this just doesn't feel right what are you talking about these weapons of mass destruction and then surely Which never enough, turned up yeah exactly so that, that that's what gave me a sense of like um, skepticism like it's yeah. like my intuition was kind of telling me back then that yeah nah don't don't completely believe everything that you're hearing over here this this smells like fucking horse shit mm -hmm. and then uh, later on it proved to be true it was a you know huge mistake apparently you oh, know we shouldn't have done that but but we protect the opium fields we made <laughs> yeah. sure we did that <laughs> yeah it just made me realize like there's the, you know whatever's presented out on the surface sometimes can be displayed in a certain way to accommodate uh, other intentions being pursued um that don't that the people that are going about those intentions don't want don't, don't want you to see mm. those deeper intentions. They just want you to see the narrative, the story that they're presenting to you as a way to sell you or make you uh, feel okay um, about what they're doing. So yeah, I've got that part of me he exists, and yep. um, yeah, I, I acknowledge yours. <laughs> what with um, so there's an interesting thing that you touched on just earlier, and I'm a big proponent of it is. I don't even trust my own intuitions solely. One example is this, like the podcast in general. Holy crap! The sun all of a sudden just appeared. It did, didn't it? Do you, we can move into the shade if you like. We can probably flip this around. I flip think, this bish. Yeah, I think. We get, otherwise, I'm going to end up being not your color. I'll be red. <laughs> let's 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 move it around. We'll reconvene in a second, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're back again, guys. Sorry about that. Oh, good. <sighs> I forgot how much the sun moves here. Yeah. <laughs> also, we pick like midday, which is like the most uh, yeah, volatile right, time for the sun. Yeah, true. But uh, what were we talking about? I can't remember now. Something about something deep. Something about alligators in Florida. I don't know. Probably <laughs> there was there. Oh, well, I'm going gator hunting in. Um, what is it? Gator hunting in a couple of months. Mm. Gator hunting, boa constrictor hunting. Uh, cool. Yeah. Florida's just... America is just different. Yeah. You know, like like we're going ho heli hog hunting okay. in Texas, hopefully in a couple of months. Like off a, off a helicopter? Literally out the side of a helicopter. Okay. Just shoot... Because like they're, they're pests. Like yeah, yeah. I'll probably have a bit of a hard time doing it. Because mm. if I'm not eating the animal, like I hunted for the first time in December, mm. that was an experience. That spiritually, actually, that is 
being faced with death that you're responsible for mm. is the most insane leveling experience you will have because you're, you're met with real mortality. Uh, have you ever been hunting? I have, but I didn't, we didn't kill anything. Uh, okay. Yeah, I went bow hunting. Bow hunting? Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, I know. That's why we didn't catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was out in the outback. I went on. Uh, what were you hunting? Goats. Yeah, wild goats. In the outback? Yeah, there's shitloads of them. That's why we're really? hunting them. Yeah, we got permission from the local Aboriginals that uh -huh. are there. It's a land called uh, Muliangapa. It's like a national park called Marawinji. Fucking incredible. It's like 14 hours west from Sydney. And um, yeah, we befriended like the local kind of caretakers of the national park. Their family has, you know, been there for thousands of years. And um, yeah, they gave us permission to go and attempt to hunt some goats and wow. we didn't catch anything but it was a good experience you know yeah just a lot of respect for it and understanding like yeah i should probably fucking learn a bit more about how to do this uh -huh. you know um but yeah i was with some friends and basically the goats are like pests out there and yeah we were also like planning on if we caught something to you know prepare it and you know the mm. ab local aboriginal said they'll help us skin it and all that sort of stuff and cook like a goat curry mm -hmm. um but yeah it didn't happen next time yeah yeah there's something like like because that the reason we did it i've always wanted to because same thing i'm like that mini doomsday in the back of my head i'm like right. well if shit falls apart i need to be able to like you know try and go and hunt yeah just like some basic skills yeah it's always good to know and it's like it's it's like a bit of an art to it and uh yeah it's yeah. it's so the thing that was in because we went full start to finish so i had to go hunt it um then the guy that i was with he, he's from a family like they hunt all the time like they they'd hunted 20 deer that that season alone his mom used to go hunting and when she was pregnant so she was teaching her boys why she had another boy in the in the stomach shooting mm -hmm. another deer mm -hmm. but they they took me from the like the whole way down so we ki we cut we kill it then he's just like all right starts cutting it open right there and then and he's like you have to do this too and i was like fuck i did say i was going to do everything mm -hmm. so like f just from there to stakes and um it was the weirdest experience because of how watching like my well being aware of my coping mechanisms as well because we, like we, we we weren't sure it was 60 yards away 60 meters mm. we were trying to figure out if it was young or old and we couldn't like it had no spots at least but i was like I'm like how old is it and the guy that took me was like ah, i don't know could be three years old i don't know we get it as soon as, as soon as we get to the deer it's a one-year-old and i was like ah, fuck mm. feel a bit guilty yeah but also, statistically, those things could have been hit by cars, torn apart by coyotes or wolves. Whatever like, help, helps you make, uh, helps. That's you what you got to do. <laughs> that's what you got to do. <laughs> but the point was as well is, I'm going to eat all of this meat. Right. You know, like I, this one death will be responsible for thirty plus meals versus me just hiring a hitman every time I go to Publix or Woolies. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I respect that. I understand that. You know, when I was in Pakistan, we went to some village up in the mountains and the local leader of the village, he welcomed us and he said, we're going to slaughter two goats. I was with like three other guys from mm. Australia. And like, what a word, slaughter. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I can't remember. I think you said slaughter. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure the word was slaughter. It's a savage word. It is a fucking savage word. <laughs> and because, uh, you know, not many Australians go to this place. Yeah. It's called Fairy Meadows for anyone who wants to look it up. To get there, you've got to drive on one of the world's most dangerous roads. It's like a mm -hmm. two hour drive right on the, the edge of like a mountain. Like, it's like, and it just fits one car. And, Sometimes cars have to reserve and reserve, uh, reverse and pass each other. It's fucking messy in these oh. kind of more open areas of the road. And, you know, you look down, sometimes you could see, like, smash cars that have fallen that down. That haven't made it. Did make it. And, you know, Ugh. the guys that are, like, driving, they're, like, that's, they, they do that every day. They're just driving. They're, like, smashing durries, just, like, driving up this road. And, you know, it's just wild. Anyway, before we went on this fucking road, I remember, like, it rained the day before and... We had our guide and I'm like, man, it rained, you know, landslides, you know, slippery, 
you know, the banana peel, whoop, and then Thanks, buddy. <laughs> fall down. I'm just like, fuck, like, should we be a bit more conscious and maybe wait for another time before we yeah. try and drive up this road, right? It's in the top 10 world's most dangerous roads. And uh, he just, he's smoking a sticky, he's just, he's just looking at me, he goes, bro, why you, why you care? You, when you die, you die. You know, nothing ha- matters when you die. You're dead. <laughs> it's like basically saying like, when you're dead, you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. So you're dead. Like, so you don't worry about dying because when you're dead, you don't have to, you're that, not worrying. That doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of did at that time. It just made me go, fuck it. Like, you're right. Just, if I'm dead, I'm dead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> I get what you're putting down, Mr. Cigarette fucking tour, tour guide man from Pakistan that the government told me not to go to. Um, and we get there and they, I remember seeing these two goats and um, yeah they killed them like in front of us they did like the, the, the kind of Muslim way uh, slash the throat bleed it out and then we watched them just skin the whole thing and put all the guts in one spot and then within a few hours like we had a barbecued meat and it was very you know beautiful experience I guess just honouring the animal and watching it die in front of me just gave me a bit like just more respect that okay like that animal just died mm. and I'm eating that animal it just like more appreciation for what I was actually like consuming and then you look around and this is beautiful area this village all the goats there they drink glacier water they're all eating herbs and tea leaves and wild strawberries and shit in the paddocks and fields mm-hmm. of this like beautiful lush village up nestled in the mountains um you're just like yeah okay well that feels better than some factory farm shit that i got from you know coals or something like that you know yeah it's like that there's definitely a more more of an energetic presence to this you know meat i'm consuming now so yeah yeah are you you're not Um, vegan or anything like that i I ate everything Yeah. Yeah, yeah i ate everything yeah it's all right guys let's quickly talk about testosterone levels in men as we hear often that it's decreasing in a lot of people but what we're not aware of is it's a natural phenomenon to happen as you age now that can be as young as your early 20s or as late as if if you're lucky your late 40s or 50s now there are a couple of telltale signs and you probably haven't even looked into it because Either you're just not aware of it or you haven't really thought about it or going and getting a blood test just seems like a massive headache because it's a half a day probably. You got to fast the night before, the morning of. You don't really want to do it. But there is a free online test that only takes about 60 seconds to fill out that can give you up to an 88% accuracy indicating whether or not you may or may not have low testosterone. Now, this test, the link will be in the description for this. It is called the ADAM test. So it stands for some fancy name that I haven't really been paying attention about, but this is done by T Clinics USA. So these guys, I pair up with them. I do another podcast with them called The Man Lab that's all about peptides, uh, testosterone, all that sort of cool shit. Now, this is not saying you have to do that, but if you're interested in finding out whether or not you have low testosterone or at least have an indication of it, head to bit.ly forward slash the Adam test. That is T-H-E-A-D-A-M. T-E-S-T. That is bit.ly forward slash the Adam test. That link is in the description of whatever channel you're watching this right now. So if you want to go check that out, it's 60 seconds. Click the link in the bio right here and you can fill that out to find out. And if you find out you probably have low testosterone, the guys at T Clinics can reach out to you or you can reach out to them to see what you can do to make yourself feel more energetic, maybe increase your sex drive, whatever it is you're after, because we all know that testosterone levels, it just, when they're up, you feel up, and when they're down, you feel down. So, bit.ly forward slash the atom test, and let's get back to the show. Because that's what, because, I mean, it's funny, I I married a vegan, then like five years on, I'm carnivore diet basically now like 95%. Okay. Um, Not for like an opinion, it was just yeah, yeah. split testing how I feel. Yeah. Like we mentioned before the podcast, even if I have healthy carbs, the energy level is a little bit lower, which is, if you told me that 12 months ago, I'd be like, you're an idiot. I need yeah. carbs. I train. Like I would tell you you're an yeah, idiot. Right. Yeah. But it's very, it's been a very interesting experience. But with my wife, like the driving cause for her, which is most vegans is 
I don't want to be responsible for death. For, for ethical reasons. Yeah. yeah. Which I can understand, you know, you look at, you know, a lot of us have already seen like those documentaries and videos of, you know, the slaughterhouses and shit. It's mm. fucking disgusting. It's heartbreaking. You yeah. Know, you've seen these pigs in little pens and they can't even fucking turn around, you know. It's just, it's, it's just like, okay, well, this is what life of other beings has gotten to mm. in order to feel the level of consumption that the human race wants for the amount of people that there are it's just like it you know it feels off it feels yeah. like kind of the way that it was before where you you know you go hunting and you know there's like a level of balance within the ecosystem yeah and, you know like there's a weird appreciation when you're like what you said like in what i said earlier too which is like you're facing death mm. and especially facing your the death that you're responsible for mm. like i've never i felt more the only time i felt more connected to my wife and daughter was the birth of my daughter right this when you saw something I'm like oh shit this thing was eating grass literally two minutes ago yeah, yeah and yeah. now it, it you look at a dead body of a deer and it's like it's not even a deer anymore. It's just this meat covered in fur. Right. And I was just like, it was this weird grounding connection with my wife and where I appreciated them on a different level where I was like, I didn't expect that mm -hmm. from something so basic as well, hunting. Well, I think, you know, our death is, we're, we're, we're pretty ignorant. We're pretty disconnected from death. A hundred percent. society. Like, uh, one of the cool things that I liked about some of the places I went to is how death is there. It's in your face. Mm. Like whether I'm in like some Hindu temple where they're burning bodies there and they have like a ceremony in the rivers and stuff. Um, or you're seeing animals getting slaughtered in front of you. Um, or the, the natural landscape of that area is you know quite a dangerous you know like yeah mountainous regions landslides you, you're kind of walking past and they're like yeah six people died last night because there was a landslide that smashed the whole village or you know areas where there's you know gang violence or, or close to war zones poverty and yeah it really just kind of you know smacks you in the face and goes okay well there that is yeah, yeah no, it's it's uh, it's in your face and I mean, it makes you appreciate like you appreciate a book because it ends mm, right. and I, th I think a lot of people we want we we're not faced enough with the end now is that a better thing i don't know but i think humans need problems in order to survive because we're problem solving creatures that mm. i think as like i think that's part of why this some groups are just going absolutely insane in Western cities because mm. it's like, we haven't got problems. We've got to create problems, right? you know? And there is that thing when you're faced with like, hey, this shit ends and then all of a sudden you're gone. And yet then you're like, huh, how cool is this then? Yeah, right. We yeah, haven't yeah, got yeah. that. We haven't got much of that. How cool is this left mm. in Western society? Because we've got how cool cool is that guy's life on that jet mm. or on that social media yeah you know feed or that virtual reality or yeah yeah we're not no, really I, faced I, with it anymore. I, I, I agree yeah i think um yeah I, I think i was really having a lot of these sort of thoughts during my travel this is a big part of my transition you know talking mm. about this like kind of transition i was getting all these sort of thoughts like i'm traveling to all these countries like oh my god man like society isn't what it seems and all this sort of stuff and you know they're lying to us about the wars and all this shit um you know i had my own like version of that during COVID as well you know yeah i, I didn't get vaccinated and you know i chose to you know kind of follow what was that like here so i sorry to cut you off is because yeah. that's something that's fascinating to me because i haven't mm. had i've got a couple of friends but my wife and i we moved to america three days before your insane lockdowns or right. like those four month long lockdowns yeah so we moved from australia where we were so lucky to get down to no cases but right. i saw the rhetoric of one case is one case too many and i'm right. there going hold on what mm. so then we fly to florida where florida didn't give a fuck yeah, since I like remember, yeah florida was since crazy. may 2020 and so once we landed there and we're around like it's people like yeah i got COVID twice i'm fine mm. And like, I'm like, huh. And we're around, like, she's six months pregnant at the time, but just this 
release of fear was taken for like the, the fear was taken from our shoulders mm. and then we watch australia just peak a little bit with covid cases and it was like 200 cases meanwhile there's 20,000 in florida right, yeah. a, a day and we watch just everyone be like well we have to do our part and i'm like you guys are like I, it's good intentions but you're being manipulated i don't think there was a big scheme behind it mm -hmm. i think it was just contrasting issues of, yeah, again right. like that situation but i saw like the bullying of the choice like you know right. you, you have a choice you can take it Maybe you lose your job you lose your job but it's a choice <laughs> it's a choice we're not forcing yeah. you mm. um how did what did you see like, what was it like for the people here that were like all right when we're, we're not going to do it mm. like what, what was it because i only saw on social media stuff and I heard from one other friend. Right. But yeah, everyone so, else got it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I was in a pretty interesting position because um, I was doing the sort of work I'm doing now, like doing therapy and coaching work for people. And I was working with COVID nurses. I was working with people that have had vaccine injuries. I was working mm -hmm. with people that were like on student visas. And if they didn't get vaccinated, they're going to get deported back to their country. Oh, they, they were deporting like well, you know, I, th I think there was like some people that were kind of stuck in a, but if they didn't get vaccinated, they weren't allowed to go back to their country. So there was like people that were really kind of in positions where if they didn't get it, like fuck knows what they would have had to have done yeah. at that time. Um, you know, I had people that were, um, you know, pe people that had had people that had been, you know, affected by COVID in uh, negative ways. I had people... Yeah, so I, I was surrounded by, you know, vast array of different people and perspectives. And my stance at that time, it was just to, like, not judge anyone for what they were doing. Just to like, kind of let people have their yeah. own bodily autonomy to choose, you know, what they want to do with what they want to insert in their body, you know. And um, for your, me... Your body, your choice. Yeah, exactly. Like, my, my, my position, the reason why I didn't get vaxxed is I just didn't feel like I needed it. Like, mm. um, you know, very confident in my health. Um, I very rarely get sick. I got COVID. It was like for a few days, I was fine. Like I was a bit shit for a couple of days. Um, so, you know, basic common sense, you know, keep clean, wash. If I'm mm. sick, don't fucking go and hang out with vulnerable people. Like yeah. I was just, that's what I was doing, you know. Um, so yeah, I think there were some people here that I met that were you know struggling with the whole thing. I, you know, people definitely got traumatized throughout mm. that. You know, either being by being isolated or judged and you know vilified by people around them. I know people that got vaccine injuries and it completely flipped like their entire perspective of the whole world. Like yeah. they were like real kind of you know follow the rules before that. They got a vaccine injury where they're getting like heart palpitations and oh, passing my what is it is carditis my i don't know what the what it was but i know a guy he passed out after just right after he got really a vaccine and he had like a heart issue he lost like uh, he got numbness down his i don't know something like that and after that he went on a full just like yeah bzz, like deep into society and you know i was just like okay there he goes well it's because you've had your whole construct of reality broken right. in a second yeah exactly and that can happen in so many different ways you know mm. it can happen with people now seeing what's going on in the middle east you know there's yeah. like um there was this like facade of like western society being righteous and following you know all about humanitarian law and like you know all this sort of shit and then next thing you know you're seeing like western powers openly supporting what you know the icj now is considering a plausible case of genocide and you mm. know, everyone's seeing all these videos on their phone of dead kids and it's like still getting supported by you know america yeah. for example so it's like for some people that can be like a what like mm -hmm. that can be that can be the challenge of like the perspective that they have with like superiority of like western society over other ones morally or something like that and challenge like that paradigm of the way that they see the world and just realizing everyone is fucking human and we've all got shadows and some people are better at hiding them than others but mm. you know eventually sooner or later they can be revealed to the surface and your whole world can be flips up flipped upside down and challenged you know when things like that happen yeah and that definitely in the last three because like same thing with like the conversation that we had before 
before COVID was even a thing, so 2019, mm. Stace was like, I don't want my kids getting vaccinated. I'm just like, what are you, dumb? Mm. What are you doing? Like, the blah, blah, blah. And again, seeing the big manipulation happen in such a short time frame for me personally, at least seeing like 2020 through, like it was the changing of the guard from 2020 to 2021 with Trump to Biden, where I was just like, hold on, this isn't a logical argument because when Trump was bringing out the vaccine, it was untested, it's Ill, it's it's inhumane, he's, he's rushing it. The Republicans are like, he's doing his best he can. Democrats were like, what I just said, it's the, this thing is untested, untrialed, it's, it's gotta go through the right protocols, we're not gonna have one in time. Mm. Literally three months later, Biden's in office, Republicans and Trump are saying it's not tested, it's not safe, it's this and that. Yeah, and everyone then, just finds a way to go like, against each other and point. Yeah, the and that's, that was when my, my red flag went off. I was like, hold on. I was anti it when it was Trump's one. Hmm. I'm still anti it. But now I'm a, I'm considered Republican. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what happened? <laughs> it just it just shows you that in the in the realm of politics, everyone's going to point the finger at someone else. And yeah. Every single negative aspect that they can point out, they'll blame the other person for it to increase support for their own side. You know, it's just like. Um, but so many of us fall victim to it. Like yeah, definitely. It, this tr this trip, like I said, a lot of people that I spoke to two years ago were like, dude, you're an absolute nut job. You're a conspiracy theorist. Mm. A year ago, then when I visited last year, they were like, yeah, I think we just kind of got duped. This visit, they're bitter. They're angry about how all these things have happened. We're not even taking the things now. Mm. And I'm just there going, at least you guys are noticing it. Mm. Thank goodness. Like, mm. But there are some people who are still like, nope, I was right. Because it's easier to fool a man than to tell him he was fooled mm. or convince him he was fooled. Mm. And I, I just... I think back to, uh, uh, that's what we were talking about before the cameras, we had to move. How much, like how do you help people realize they're probably lying to themselves? Cause that's the hardest thing mm. for us to do. Like for me, it was podcasts. I would have a conversation with someone. I'd be like, oh, it went poorly or it went this way or they didn't like me. Then I watch it in third person. I'm like, that's completely different to how I remember that situation. I was there, it was me. Mm -hmm. Um, but not everyone has that ability to have a camera filming them and without those internal themselves. biases playing right. in it, you know? Like, mm -hmm. how, how do you help people with that? Because you coach them through stuff like that, yeah? yeah? Yes, okay, so so how, what would the precise question be? Help people through- how, how do you help people- That are lying to themselves? That are lying to themselves saying? because that is the hardest thing mm. to address to yourself that, oh shit, I was wrong and I was creating blind spots. I think, first of all, I don't, I don't try and get them to see that they're lying to themselves. That's not mm. my intention. Um, but that ends up happening throughout the process, not by my conscious uh, like intention. That's not, mm. that's not the energy that I'm going. My energy towards clients isn't, I'm gonna try and get them to see how they're lying to themselves. Like that's yeah, that's yeah. not what I'm doing, right? But do you notice that if they are? Yeah, of course. I can I can yeah. always assume through my own lens, but I'm not fucking enlightened and I can read your mind. Like, you know <laughs> Let me see your palm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I don't I don't know, but I can assume based on patterns that I'm observing and relaying that off my own patterns or patterns I've observed with other people and I can go, maybe that's that going on there. But I won't say that to them. Mm. Um, so basically, it would only ever occur if someone has reached a point in their life where something is happening that is creating value for them to question and observe from different perspectives mm -hmm. and essentially access the truth of mm. it okay so if someone is really fixed in a certain belief system it's a enmeshed in their identity that belief system has a certain levels of you know behaviors or words that they express out into the world ways that they feel and that way of being is still valuable for them to meet their needs keep them safe accepted feel like they have a sense of belonging whatever it is then trying to you know get them to see that you know they're lying to themselves is you're more subscribing yourself to getting into a fucking argument yeah. you know, with someone 
So th this is the nature of the sort of work I do with people. If I'm talking to someone I know on a personal level, it's going to be very different. I'll dispute them. I'll, I'll have a discussion with them and you know, I'll challenge their beliefs. Yeah. But in, in regards to the sort of work I do, it would be them bringing forward something that they're struggling with. Let's say it's um, alcohol consumption. As, as an example, mm -hmm. they're drinking too much and they're like, you know, I want to cut down a little bit, you know, whatever. Um, what uh, I would invite them to do is then connect to the part of them that values the alcohol consumption. And then what they may find upon doing that is the part of them who values it seeks to gain a sense of connection. The alcohol uh, diffuses the anxious thoughts that they get when they're in social environments because they have a part of them that's very critical of them to be good when they're in public and don't say something stupid because then they're going to get judged by people. Mm. And, you know, where does that come from? Uh, it comes from because when I was young, I didn't feel accepted by, you know, my friends and social group back then. And it's a, a wound that I haven't healed and resolved. And it's been kind of running on autopilot in the back of my fucking head. And now whenever I'm in a social environment, that hypervigilance switches on yep. and I feel anxious and I can't operate, you know, confidently in that social environment. So I've just picked up and learned whatever way to diffuse the thoughts around me, which is that a fucking bar, there's alcohol everywhere, everyone else is doing it. We're all sharing the same way to navigate this social situation together. And this is what's happening. So upon like that deeper, you know, inspection, they may observe the truth and realize, fuck, I was just lying to myself thinking that it's because I didn't have enough self-control and willpower, but it's mm, it's really something deeper. There's really the truth is there was something deeper. You were using it as a way to meet some kind of need. There's like some you know, distress there. Some you know, there's some discomfort, some anxiety there that they, you're using that for, and it's it's all coming from a good place. But that's what was going on deeper in your mind, beyond yeah. your conscious, analytical, logical mind judging the situation. Going, you're drinking too much and spending too much money. Like there's a deeper truth than that so that's how people can become disillusioned so they had this illusion of their relationship with alcohol i've got control over it i don't drink too much i've just got to cut out the beers every now and again but you go beneath that layer and you're you'll observe something that um will give you like a greater uh, truth to, to the circumstance yeah yeah it's, it's, it's great you say that because that's i've had that conversation with it's marketing as well but i mean marketing is psychology and i always tell people i'm like what you think there's always that little layer below and but figuring it out that's the hard part like um for me it's usually like i'll i'll sit and write not journaling like dear diary but like sometimes it's the dumbest shit <clears throat> like i'll be like i'm i'm angry about something I'm, i just know i'm angry mm. and recently i was writing and i'm just like flowing just like whatever comes out and i'm just like oh i'm pissed because this fucking room's a mess mm -mm. i cleaned the room and i was like oh cool like but here I am thinking it's because maybe my wife's done like my wife mm. did something like it's not my fault it's someone else that's created me to be angry and then I was like it's literally something so basic like this room is just a mess so I was up till midnight cleaning it mm. went to bed happy weird yeah yeah okay well there you go so there's something you know behind the anger there that there always on is. the surface it's like it's my wife but then you uh -huh. know, it's probably you're angry you know, as an assumption angry at yourself for being unorganized and yeah. messy or something like that and that anger is trying to you know kind of motivate you going go on get up and fucking yeah, clean your room it's misdirected of. yeah yeah right yeah and that free flowing writing of just whatever's coming and sometimes it's a waste of time but sometimes it's like yeah you hit it and you're like blah 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 this place is a fucking mess Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, do, um, so with the coaching, yeah. I'm also curious why with your, cause your content obviously is very, uh, it's, it's targeted if you had to niche it, which I think yours is, is you actually have a really clear message, which is great, but part of the skits, like you, you shared a meme recently was, uh, people who come after seeing my my skits or whatever it was along those lines and like this guy's funny when i talk to them about actual spiritual stuff i don't like this guy. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because i think what you're tapping on is such a very a, like a lot of i think when someone is disconnecting in a way that's that we personally don't. So if I disconnect with alcohol, mm. I look at someone who's a spiritual person who's swinging off this earth and I'm like, mm. ugh, they can't deal with this shit. Yeah, right. If I'm a spiritual person who's having ayahuasca weekly, I look at an alcoholic and I go, they can't deal with that shit, right, but I'm right. doing the same shit. Right, right, ayahuasca right. literally every day, every right. second yeah, uh, yeah, week yeah. or whatever. Um, what, what got you to focus on 
the spirituality um, mm. hypocrisy right. rather than like you don't really go broad beyond that. Like you don't target alcoholism. You don't target mm. um, binge eating or anything like mm. that that I'm aware of at least. Right. I mostly see the disassociation of, of the spiritual realm, like the mm. <laughs> freaking period blood on the face. <laughs> when I saw that one, dude, I was crying laughing because every time I see that on like goop, I go to, I go to my wife because Stacey loves those sort of things and yeah, I'll be just yeah. like, it's a quack of shit. And then yeah, like yeah. three months later, she'll be like, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets me all this stuff too, but it was just yeah, funny. Yeah. Like, so when, when you had that period blood thing, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, why, why that? specific mm. part of disassociation mm. it's a good question i feel like there's a bit of a gap in the self-development spiritual self-work uh, healing mm -hmm. space that i haven't really seen many people discussing that stuff um and you know i've been through it to a degree mm -hmm. you, know, you have a few psychedelic experiences you're like man i know everything about the fucking universe i've got a solution yeah yeah i know how to solve the world's problems come everyone uh so you know i've been through it to, to a degree and i've acknowledged that part of me yeah you know uh, so i can uh, i'm taking the piss out of that part of others but really i'm kind of poking the fun out of that part of me mm. that i've acknowledged and you know i acknowledge he's there and i can have a laugh with him and be like you're a cute, cute cunt <laughs> like you know good good for you, you know? good for you buddy <laughs> you're doing good mate you're doing good <laughs> um so you know i've got a relationship with that part and i think um it's 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 important to understand this sort of stuff because these are all layers through the journey that eventually we're going to be faced with a part of us that wants to bypass, who wants to heal quickly, yeah. who, wants, who gets lost in different ideologies, who disassociates from reality and kind of gets lost between the two dimensions of the physical world and the internal spiritual world and both of them become kind of blended in and you don't really know who you are or like mm. where you are and who you are. Like reality gets a bit, bit, a bit hazy and foggy. Um, so, you know, I, I guess, you know, I've experienced it to a degree. I've noticed that there's a gap in the, in, in the space for it. Uh, I, I genuinely want to help people and I feel like poking fun of these aspects of it will allow people to be more discerning of what sort of modalities or people that they connect with to go about their healing journey so that they're healing in a more meaningful way. Uh, way that's you know potentially you know healthier for them and and what they need not getting duped mm. down a path of you know just subscribing to some guru and idolizing them and being codependent to some talk therapist that just gets you to kind of replay your fucking problems yeah. every week and just intellectualize it like or you know th there's so many things to criticize about the self-development healing space and i've got a part of me who's a joker he's he likes to take the piss mm. And that's my way of channeling it to shine a light on aspects where people can be like, fuck, that's so true. Mm. Uh, but there's always a good intention behind it because I think criticism is, 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 is great. It's healthy uh, if it's like constructive. And I believe expressing it with humor is even better because it allows yeah. people to observe that, have a light shown on it and also laugh about it. So that's like the main intention for it. Um, and also because it's just fucking funny. There's just so mm -hmm. much shit to poke fun of in the spiritual world, man. There's yeah. just like so much. But I definitely want to like, uh, I know I've been going hard on the spiritual folk and I, you know, I appreciate mm -hmm. all of you being so, you know, accepting of me, taking the piss out of a lot of you. I love you all. Uh, but uh, I definitely would like to uh, do more with like other aspects of like, I guess, more conventional uh, western approaches to healing yeah. and stuff like that um so i definitely do want to branch out like i know it kind of started with taking the piss out of like chicks that put period blood in their face whatever but you know <laughs> definitely there's like you know the male life coaches that are fucking you know like you know don't fucking ever wank and all this sort of shit like there's just like so many yeah it's things. all extremes it's just it's like, just like it's, it's some of it's a bit unrelatable and yeah uh, you know, it just gets a bit like... Fuck well, it's bro. also so hard because like the reality is everything comes down to the shit we already know. Right. But we want to we want to be the different one. Oh, yeah. it's this thing. Like, yeah. oh, if I didn't blend my bananas, that's why, I, that's why I'm obese. You're like, mm -hmm. maybe it's the cheeseburgers, but yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, especially I think, I think everyone's world. looking for like the, 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 the magic... 
Well, yeah, it's it's not my it's Magic the pill. it's the illusion of action, is what I mm. call it. It's like oh, if I'm searching for it, it means I'm doing something. Mm. But I'm not actually doing the thing that I know that works. Like like when when I was a personal trainer, and I'm I know you experienced it. Mm. People would be like, oh, "I've got this goal in 90 days," and I'm like, "I'd say to them, I'm like, you're not going to hit it. Mm. But if you stay with me for nine months, you'll hit it. And if you stay with yourself, like, I'm like, you're, to, I'm, I, I'll be honest with them. I'm like, look, my goal is just to keep you coming back. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no secret to how I'm fit other than I can. I've just done way more hours than you. Yeah, yeah, right. That's the only difference. Mm. And the next question I actually had because so many people want to have the end goal. Mm. You know, like whether it's financial, whether it's emotional relationship, like they think when I get blank, it's there. Mm. When we both know the reality is it's always changing. Um, How do you, if you do, do you guide people through that? Because you know. Like kind of wrestling with that. Yeah, like there there is no destination. I think that's what's the hardest part for people to struggle. Mm. Like Our biggest struggle is most of us. We want to know what that destination is and how to get there, Mm. when the reality is there is none. I know right now I'm dressed like I'm about to either go to Hawaii or I'm about to be some sleaze bag on a yacht in Miami, but I'm deliberately doing something right now, and that is trying to get your attention. This is what we all need to be doing for our business. It doesn't have to be as ridiculous as this, but short form content is where it is at. Yes, it is so saturated right now, but that actually makes it very easy because there's a lot of people who have no idea what they're doing, which makes it easier for you to increase your sales for your business. Now, my business outside of this is actually a short form production company called Sky Media House. And our clients typically see a two to 10X ROI on their investment with short form content with us. Just this month alone, we've had six videos hit over a million views for a total of 10 million views between just those six. Now, put that into perspective. 10 million pairs of eyes have seen six videos of our clients just alone. That's not including all the other videos that we have produced for them. Now, what we've noticed outside of that virality is that 85% of consumers will first Google about you. So if they're trying to say, find a a landscaper, they're going to search landscaper in my area. Hopefully your SEO is doing a good job. And if it's not, YouTube short form actually helps build your SEO. But two, once they find whether or not you are an option and if you're in the top five, they then will then research if they like you. And they do that by Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube shorts. And this is a popular one popping up. The reason that's powerful is because what happens is you start developing a relationship with your potential clients before they've even called you. And that speeds up the sales process and gives you an unfair advantage against your competitors when they call your competitors. They're going to be comparing you to them and you're going to be winning. This is why short form is such a vital component, but it has to be engaging. If it doesn't connect with your audience, you're not going to make sales. So if you wanted to find out how we help clients make two to 10 times the money they invest in us month after month, go to skymediahouse.com, book a call with me, and we'll have a quick conversation to see if we align. And if we do, we can talk where we go from there. Skymediahouse.com, let's get back to the show. Yeah, so uh, very normal like kind of point uh, to get to, especially in relation to like healing because there's this like notion that you're going to reach this point where you know it's all high vibe and love and light and you're going to be fully healed and you know all this sort of stuff which you know i'm not going to deny you're not going to gravitate towards you know the more that you build a better relationship with yourself and integrate and heal these parts of yourself that you've suppressed and hidden and and rejected and denied for so much of your life um but integration is a lifelong journey you know mm. it's like i could have someone now who's doing work with me who has been single for five years they went through some pretty uh you know shitty breakups their past relationships the dynamics were you know quite toxic let's say uh they were in a dynamic where they idolized their partner and um you know perceived them as someone above them and they kind of submitted to them they struggled to set boundaries and speak their truth uh, around them and that then led to their partner kind of taking advantage of that and having too much freedom to just do whatever they wanted so they weren't held accountable on certain yeah. things and kind of um 
you know, had their shit called out every now and again. And then that led to the other person getting hurt, you know, so it'd be a bit of a mess, right? And then after that, you got hurt and then you kind of don't trust yourself to go through another relationship after that because you're like, I'm unworthy. Look what happened. It happened to me. And parts of your you know, protective system are going to be like, man, I'm not going to reveal your vulnerability because look what you did last time when we did that. It was a fucking mess, right? So people can come to me being really closed off from experiencing love you know they haven't grieved their last relationship well they, they don't trust themselves their self-worth is quite low at the moment um and they'll do some we'll do some work and we'll get to the core of where it comes from we'll process like the relationship that they went through we'll work with them bettering their relationship with themselves and different parts of them getting them to trust themselves more and building a relationship to their self and the protective parts so that they can their parts are like cool yeah like all right we're gonna we're gonna show up differently in this next relationship that we're gonna go in and then they'll be more open to experiencing love after that, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, they feel lighter. They feel more safe when they walk around. Anytime, like if, if they're a woman, there's a, there's a guy that's kind of, you know, expressing some kind of interest in them. They'll be less closed off, a bit more playful and open and, and, and just be more curious to that stuff. You know, they may get to that point, maybe even start dating again and opening themselves up and not having these sort of views of the world that all oh, men are shit and, you know, whatever. They're, they're a bit more, you know, mm -hmm. objective in the way that they yeah, perceive. That's, that's the quickest way to never find a good guy yeah. is believe that all men are shit. Right, exactly. And same thing. And same yeah. reverse. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. And, you know, it's a, protective, it's a protective part coming out that's trying mm. to prevent us from connecting yeah. with, you know, if you're a woman to a man or whatever. It also know, does create to. those blind spots too. Like if, if, you're, if you genuinely believe guys are bad, mm. like how often have you heard women when they're like, oh, guys suck. I go, well, he's a good guy. Mm. Oh, he's just such a nice guy. Mm, mm, you're mm. like, wait, wait, the one thing that you said guys aren't and no, but he's, he's different. Mm. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we just go, it's just a generalization. Yeah. There's a part but of I, us. I won't date a nice guy. Yeah, there's like, there's a part of us that if you've been through those wounding experiences, mm. like whether it be, you know, if, if, if it's a woman saying that, it may be with her father. Yeah. Her father abandoned her. Maybe she's experienced some kind of abuse from men around her throughout her whole life. Maybe there was like five significant men in her life and each one of them lied to her maybe physically abuse her in some way, abandon mm. her. So to that part of her that connects deeply with, with men, each time it's been abused or she's been rejected, abandoned. So therefore that part of her has that generalized worldview of, of all men being that way. Yeah. So it's understandable, but it's important, you know, if if you're a woman or a man who's experienced the same thing with women or if you're, you know, if you're if you're uh, gay and you, you, you're attracted to members of the same sex, whatever, it's you got to work through that so that you can be open mm. to, to receiving love again. Yeah. Um, just to open up that door, right? So someone may do that work with me. They get to a point where they're open enough to go to start but then what happens when they get into a relationship? Mm. New shit's going to come up. Yeah. There's new things. always shit. Yeah. Other things are going to come up. Mm. And some people will, will go through this new stuff coming up. They're like, fuck, I thought I already dealt with this. Like, you know, mm. all the healing work I've done has put me back to square one. It's all for nothing. And it's like, well, hold on a second. All the healing work you just done got you to that point. Yeah. Now you're in a relationship. Now other shadows are coming up. Other parts of you are that were concealed are emerging. Mm time to work on that yeah integrate that and then after that you know you may go through another breakup or let's say you stay with him and you get fucking married to him then you have a kid with you him you have more shit other <laughs> stuff comes up yeah you know so things are going to continue to come up but i think the the main thing that i would say to people that may be wrestling with that the, the frustration that they have of feeling like they're kind of just gone back at square one oh i got more shit to heal is just Acknowledge that you're moving forward in life. You're not stuck in the same place, mm. like just wallowing in resentment and blocked off and fear of being vulnerable and staying in that, uh, you know, that original state that I said of that person who could be there for five years, for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, yeah. and then living life in regret going, fuck, I should have just yeah. kind of put myself out there more. And so it's, it's, it's or just- Or externally <laughs> blaming everyone else so you don't have to deal with the fact that it's your fault. Yeah, right. Exactly, you're taking responsibility, mm. you know, I, I would say, so that you don't have to take responsibility for these parts of yourself yeah. and build that trust and openness. So that's what I would say to people. It's a lifelong journey. Uh, as long as you're moving forward, I think that's the most important thing. And I think as long as people are getting tangible results, yeah, that's what people. That's what will give them energy. So it could be with a business. 
someone, you know, they might start off working with me because they're transitioning from their current career to a new one. They want to do something fulfilling and meaningful. So they build up the courage to do that. They get out of the comfort zone. They start putting themselves out there to be creative and in their own business and career. But then they start the business. New things are going to come up. Then they got yep. up and down of business. New things come up. Then they got to wrestle with the fact of maybe getting out there on social media, making videos, marketing, sales, relationship with money, like not just being dependent on some corporate system to meet their yep. needs for financial security. So there's going to be all different layers. But through that, if you move forward, your business is going to grow. You're going to become more successful. You're going to be rewarded for that. And yeah. that's it. Like you, you're continuing to work on yourself. It's a lifelong process and yeah. journey. And always remain curious and learn and the way i like to say it, just the final point before i finish off this last kind of rant is when i'm 80 i want to look back at when i'm 70 and go that seven year old me was fucking cute yeah he thought he knew everything he thought he was all over he healed everything is but i, I want to still grow in my mind like, like mm. mentally spiritually emotionally um physically as well fuck it why not uh during <laughs> during those you know later stages of my life i don't want to just get to like 60 and be like okay i know everything now like i want to stay curious yeah. like what else can i learn about myself you know as yeah. time goes on there and also being present with where you are now so i because for me the the most liberating moment in my life and i don't know when it was but it was just that awareness of shit happens you've solved the problem it's just it is what it is like no, nothing is nothing is good nothing is bad it just is what it is and like I, I kind of by removing that labeling of binary which is like I have a joke which is nothing in the world is binary except for gender I'm joking but <laughs> <laughs> um, are you though? <laughs> <laughs> sex is, is, is binary sorry um, no well Quick side note, when I read um, the book Sapiens and that, that came up, gender and sex, I was like, oh, here we go. I read it and I was like, oh, I agree with that. Like gender is a construct, meaning mm. like kings used to be masculine if they had long wavy clothing and everything. Mm. And now if if you do that, you're gay Yeah, right. or you're feminine. Like mm. it, that, and that's what gender is. Sex is binary. Yeah, right. Anyway. Side note, I agree with that. Just mm. don't mix up sex. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hear Um but the the realization that nothing is black and white like whether it's israel and palestine it's mm. not black and white mm. like there's so it's so multi-layered that if for me to even try to understand it and have an opinion on it is is so absurd mm. uh mm. ukraine whatever the, insert the thing but even with relationships with work nothing is binary like we had a conversation my wife and i last night she's like she's asking something about my dad like do you think blank and i go Honestly, I don't know because it could have been this, then mum, then this, then dad, and then it was this cycle that then happened across five years that if we look at one variable, he's the bad guy. Mm. But if we look at another variable, she's the bad guy. Mm -mm -mm. It's it, but Or is it just a system that wasn't addressed early on being like, hey, this is how I feel. Can we work on blank? Mm. Um, so, but with me, so back to my, my, my situation of what, elevated me in terms of just going like okay cool it, this is just life was being very grateful for where i'm at currently and it wasn't until my friend sway asked me literally a month ago he goes well, what's your five-year goal he goes what's your, what's your dream and i go dude if i told myself four years ago what i'm doing today i'd be like holy fuck are you mm -hmm. kidding me you're traveling around the states you're getting paid to make videos mm -hmm. you're getting paid to do podcasts like are you fucking kidding me? Mm. And he was like, huh. And I go, look, so five years from now, I don't have a crystal clear view goal. I just know that if I keep doing what I'm doing, just doing the same evaluate, act, evaluate, act routine, I don't know where it's going to go, but I know that I'll look back at now, like what you said, where I'm like, if I told myself five years ago what I'm doing now, I'd be like, holy shit. Mm -mm. And that's, that's really what I want to what is going to help i think i hope this helps people as well because that's you, you that's really the main point i took from you is just it's that ever evolving goal yeah right you know yeah. and i think that's that's the hardest thing for a lot of people because they think no when i have x i will be happy and mm. it's like dude trust me where i'm at right now if i told myself 10 years ago i'd be like oh dude i am z i have zero problems 
And I'm like, I still got some problems. I have a lot of solutions, but mm. still got problems. Yeah, right. And it's cool. But this sun is following us. <laughs> so it's probably a sign of us to wrap up. I'm currently yeah, look yeah, like yeah. I'm Two-Face from uh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so, Different parts of you. <laughs> I look like Morpheus. Yeah, you're, you. you're Morpheus, I'm Two-Face. <laughs> but Which dude, pill would you like to take? <laughs> take the red pill. Um, first of all, dude, awesome to catch up. Mm, um, nice. I can't believe it's been as long as it has been, but... Mm. Thanks for having me on, bro. Dude, thank you for coming. Like, when I messaged you, I was like, he ain't gonna come. Mm. And then you were like, fuck yeah. I was like, he's a legend. I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, bro, I know, I know. Um, you know, we, we connected like all those years ago, bro. So and long I'm, and ago, I'm always, dude. I'm always down to jump on to people, you know, that I know personally. Yeah. Especially if they're doing this sort of stuff and have a chat. And Hell yeah, you're dude. You're only fucking down the road from me, bro. I'm literally like two streets away. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. We have to go for a workout then. So it wasn't actually that much of a hassle. So don't <laughs> think you're, don't think you're that special. I've, I'm going to think I'm special. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but so for anyone who's listening, like, um, where can they find you, mm. follow up and, you know, get entertained by your spirituality yeah, <laughs> so i'm on um all social media platforms uh instagram uh, facebook uh youtube uh bit of tiktok uh so yeah i'd recommend for those of you who want to immerse yourselves in a bit of my educational stuff but also like my funny uh entertaining type of content follow me on instagram be the best place to, to observe that if you're looking for more like educational type content check me out on youtube it's a bit mm -hmm. longer format uh for those of you who are interested in diving a bit deeper into what i do um once a month i do like a free masterclass on healing just giving everyone like an understanding of what the steps are uh once a month i also do like a more experiential healing process so it's less of like a um like a presentation more of like an actual experience an inner child workshop um I also do in do in person retreats in New South Wales. I got my next one from the twenty eighth of June to the thirtieth in the Hunter mm. Valley. It's our winter festival. I saw that on your, on your IG. That looked fun, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So the, the retreats are good fun. So if, if you're looking at uh, connecting with a good like minded community, immersing yourself in different healing modalities, and just having an awesome, really memorable, um, special weekend, that will be for you. And for those of you who want to go even deeper, I would recommend my Shadow Mastery course. It's a 12-week course. Next intake begins 21st of May. Uh, 12 weeks of coaching with me and my team, and we go through like a full shadow integration process with you. So if you're struggling with something pretty significant in your life, a few different things, uh, it would be great for people to go there and get the right help uh, that they need. So all that can be found in my bio on any of these platforms. Um, Charles Missy and my last name is spelled M-Y-S-S-Y, which I'm pretty sure will be in the description of this video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it will. All right, cheers, guys. Make sure to subscribe, and I'm going to put some sunscreen on. Peace. <laughs>